in the last class we have read about the third trimester scan uh, what all we were doing so itna to discuss uh, we have this much part we have already discussed that uh, if the patient comes after 24 weeks what all we are supposed to look for uh, in the part of fetal well being and you we are usually doing it around 28 weeks to 32 weeks and can be done at um, like 28 32 and 36 weeks depending upon the uh, uh, the risk present in the patient okay and the pain capacity of the patient also has to be taken into consideration so in the uh, uh, third trimester we said that we have to assess for growth we have said that we will do the doppler and then uh, the first thing you see the growth doppler we used to talk about the presentation ki whether, whether it is how the baby is uh, lying whether it is a uh, cephalic or breech or if it is a transverse lie right? and then the third the next thing you have to do is you have to measure the afi that is the amniotic fluid volume you have to say that the liquid is adequate or not adequate then you have to tell about the cervical length and then certain part of the anomaly you have to do apart from uh, the doppler also so why what is the relevance why i am reading this is important because uh, then then only you will be interested in reading about it so what happens is suppose a patient comes to me uh, in at 28 weeks and suppose i have said that uh, uh, the cervical length which i have measured from the trans abdominal scan and i said that the uh, cervical length uh, here i have measured the bladder was this is the bladder so behind the bladder is the cervix and i have measured the cervical length and it uh, it comes out to be say uh, 3 suppose 3 cm i have said which is normal and actually uh, i have not done the tvs and it was short cervix and i do do not know how to exactly give the cervical length when it is borderline when it is you know grossly small or grossly uh, normal like 4 cm or 2 cm and there is not much doubt but when it is a borderline cervix then you are always doubtful uh, whether or not you have measured it correctly kabhi uh, 2.7 aa raha kabhi 2.3 aa raha so which measurement has to be taken becomes very important then uh, comes similarly uh, uh, similar thing comes for afi so uh, what happens is that sometimes at 28 weeks or maybe in the early uh, i detect a polyhydramnios so what is the relevance what is my job that is important ki bhai mera uh, if i am seeing that the you know the liquor is just too much so is it uh, enough that i just say that the afi is increased and uh, get get done with it or is it you know creating some suspicion in my mind that you know polyhydramnios is not a good thing and why it would be occurring in that mother so if i think like that that why this polyhydramnios or oligohydramnios is occurring in this woman and can they be associated findings and i'll start to look for it for example uh, if there is oligohydramnios and i'll look for the kidneys ki bhai kidney whether or not they are forming urine adequately or not adequately similarly the, if the patient has poly i'll ask for the history of uh, diabetes and then these patients may have the um, higher birth rate and then i'll be cautious while taking the uh, dopplers because these patients can be macrosomic in terms of diabetic mother they can have uh, accelerated fetal growth all that thing they are all associated so so we need to be very uh, meticulous about how uh, you know you measure the things uh, and what is the relevance of it okay so some part of the theory will always will always be there to understand why the things are happening the way they should and that may be boring also but then uh, you know to keep it interesting you can just think that if the patient is coming to you and she has suppose a liquor of 2 what next see tomorrow you are in the uh, ultrasound room and the the liquor is 2 what next abhi main usko deep vertical pocket dungi ya main usko charo quadrants method use karungi what will i do so if you think like that then and retrospectively think ki bhai aur kya kya ho sakta hai iske sath associations let me just read out okay so if i there are two methods of doing it one is the deepest vertical pocket method and second is the four quadrant that we are all aware of uh, so definitely you will be aware of it okay so deepest me uh, when are you going to do uh, which one in the third trimester usually we do the uh, if you there is a busy thing so you can take the deepest vertical pocket and if the single vertical pocket is normal suppose it is coming like 4 cm then obviously it is not oligo and it, uh, but it can still be poly or not be poly no because the longest vertical pocket agar four hai to usse bada pocket usually nahi hai so it's very less likely that this patient will be having poly so you know if you uh, want to just uh, if you by eyeballing itself you've seen that the liquor is adequate and you do not have enough time for 
for the patients to measure it and you have seen by eyeballing the liga looks normal just take one deep vertical pocket okay and especially in the multiple gestation when one fetus is here and the second is here and may not be feasible to uh, to take it in all four quadrants and uh, also in the second trimester when actually the baby isn't big enough to you know uh, that because if this is a maternal abdomen and then the uterus would be here you will you will won't be measuring it here 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 because the size of the uterus is not that big to divide it into quadrants okay so what are the normal values you all know that uh, it is between 8 to 24 okay 8 is the lowest limit and isko 3 se multiply kar denge so you get the highest limit of the afi that is 8 to 24 while the dvp is 2 to 8 uh, cm right so uh, less than 2 becomes oligohydramnios and then uh, more than 8 becomes poly actually it has to be uh, uh, what uh, no. Uh, measured in a way that uh, it is standard ab kaise measurement iska karna hai ye dekhiye so you what you have to do is that here you see that there should not be any fetal part i can't uh, if i measure it here suppose i am measuring it here i cannot measure it like this okay this is wrong because here the fetal part is present so if fetal part is present then i will measure it only till the fetal part theek okay? hai i'll not go beyond this uh, although i do see a pocket here ठीक है, so the deepest pocket where there is no cord or the fetal part. If you're not seeing, if sure on the gray scale, like for example here, here the cord is present, so I'll not include the cord into the measurements. If you're not sure, put the color. ठीक है, similarly you will take the four quadrants in um, if this is a maternal abdomen. So if this is a maternal abdomen and this is a uterus, so you know you put the probe in your sagittal plane. Is you go into one quadrant and don't you know just rotate the probe like this or this. You keep the probe perpendicular to the maternal abdomen. Uh, why? Because then if you are rotating it like this, then the beams would be passing uh, obliquely and it will wrongly give you the values. Okay. Chalo. Next, me. Ajay, that the form of the oral some part of the theory is important because then you will know what are the causes of oligo or poly that you are getting. So before twenty weeks. Okay. Before twenty weeks. fetal urination is not a very significant uh, contributor to the uh, formation of this amniotic fluid so you know you're thinking of by renal agenesis or the bladder outflow outflow obstruction will cause the ligo at this stage it is very less likely because at this stage if you're getting oligo more likely either the membranes would have ruptured to leak ho gaya hai sara ka sara or there is some congenital malformation which is present theek hai ya fir matlab that is uh, chromosomal disorders they are present that is why it is happening or the patient has a very high bp that is she has a pre eclampsia right so all those conditions because then the transudate that has to come from the plasma would be less because if the, if the bp would be high right so in pre eclampsia or in hypertensive disorders of the pregnancy these patients can have oligohydramnios and likewise gdm can have uh, polyhydramnios even before 20 weeks right so before 20 weeks what all is forming is what, uh, that if this is a uterus here is a placenta and then you have this cord so within the cord also the blood is flowing so uh, from the from this blood some will transudate out into the uh, amniotic fluid so it is going to be isotonic to the plasma okay so and then it, it, there will be transudation from the maternal vessels also they will uh, give rise to this and then uh, through the placenta also some of the fluid will be uh, coming into the uh, amniotic fluid right then after 20 weeks baby starts to urinate so fetal urination becomes a very important contributor contribution to the uh, amniotic fluid right and then second most important contribution is the lung secretion so two things is very important kidney and the lungs so both are actually giving rise to the uh, afi okay and then how it will be taken up by by fetal swallowing and absorption through the skin so oligo we all know that the single pocket less than 5 or less than 2 or afi less than 5 okay so is same hoga kya if there is oligo hydramnios uh, there will be very less space you will see that all the fetal parts are very crowded and there is not either cord 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 would be lying and there is not enough uh, you know place for the baby to play to grow and around to grow right and then uh, when it, the baby will not swallow the amniotic fluid the lungs will not develop because for the lung development also they need um, uh, amniotic fluid right so this will result in decreased fetal movement because of the decreased fluid they can have neuromuscular disorder like club foot can happen and then they will repeatedly they will have trauma from the uterine wall right from the uterine wall so you know this would lead to depressed nasal bridge also known as a portafacies okay 
so where you can have uh, uh, pulmonary hypo uh, sorry where, where you can have uh, flat nose micrognathia low set ears wrinkled skin you can the baby because there is not much enough uh, space for the foot to you know jump like this there will be club foot there can be umbilical cord compression and then there can be portal sequence also known as a oligohydramnios deformation sequence what happens in this is uh, in the classical portal sequence the, the oligohydramnios is because of the renal uh, re agenesis of the cystic, cystic renal disease so because the kidneys they are, have cystic renal disease or they are you know uh, not forming the urine properly they are not present itself so this would result in the oligohydramnios oligohydramnios in turn would lead to uh, improper lung development also called as the pulmonary hypoplasia uh, okay so uh, why it will be happening so aapko ab aur next time kya karna hai you have to look for one thing is you have to look for the causes and second thing is you have to look for the complications in the mother right so if there is fgr uh, oh, sorry if there is oligo so, you know more commonly you are going to find the fgr also the baby may not be uh, may have adequate fetal uh, mass which is there okay so size will also be will also be small so the important cause becomes fgr you have to see if there is you will ask the history if there is any uh, rupture of the membranes that has taken place because, and then you look for pre, uh, the risk of preeclampsia the what was the bp and the uterine artery pi right you will rule out infections one thing that you can do for the signs of infection you will look for the brain you will see for any calcification you will see for microcephaly you will see in the liver if there is any ecogenic foci uh, that can, uh, because of the infection uh, or they can be fetal anemia because uh, you know uh, certain infections like parvo virus infection they can have uh, fetal anemia so fetal anemia agar hoga so you have to look for mca psv also to detect if the uh, baby has anemia so all those conditions are linked and then you have to look for uh, the renal disorders like cystic kidney disease uh, this lower urinary tract uh, obstruction if there is twin look for uh, ttts so what happens in ttts is because there are two twins so one twin uh, becomes the a cardiac twin and the second twin uh, will pump up and give to the other other um, baby so twin twin transfusion syndrome would occur so uh, in one baby there will be poly and the other baby would be an uh, will will have oligo so this we are going to discuss in detail in the next uh, class i think so where we are going to discuss all the complications in the twins what we all have to look for and how do we diagnose all those complications right so in right now these are the causes of oligo uh, 